Welcome back, welcome back to the DAP Digest. I'm your host, Brady McKenna, here to help you digest decentralized apps and the networks they are built on. Yes, morning streams. Still working on the coffee sessions in the morning, trying to time everything well, so I'm good and awake for all of you. I think I've got it figured out. I think I've got it down. I think we're good. I got the thick, I got the uh, the French press sitting here, which is not called a French press in France, but <laughs> that's what I'm using right now, and uh, I can reload if I need. We're good. How is everyone? Is everyone doing good today? Let me pull this down a little bit. All right. We are good to go. GM, everyone. GM. How's the day, night, afternoon, wherever you happen to be? How is it treating you today? Tonight? <laughs> yeah, no worries on the uh, time there, Jack. The uh, I'm just glad someone's even attempting to add the, uh, the events in Discord, because I just always forget... I'm terrible about using new features that like social media apps launch. I just, I, I take like several months before I ever even try it. And then once I do, I, I'm like, I can never remember. Well, I think we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and dive in to the news, see what's going on in the world over the course of the week. There's actually quite a bit every week. It's never a dull week in crypto. So presentation I need to get that presentation mode transition fixed it like it looks terrible it doesn't look as good as this one like I can go to like full presentation mode and it's all smooth and I can back off and it looks all smooth and nice I can even go from uh, some of the other ones and it, it just looks perfect but I don't know I'll figure it out I had it perfect at one point in time and then I like restored everything and I bombed it and now it doesn't work. Let's do some dank dumps. Boom. I'm supposed. I, I have three of them. So because that's, my intention was to like give everyone one when I first start in the middle of the stream and at the end of the stream as a thank you for sitting through the whole thing. And I just never remember to do that either. <laughs> do I need to automate everything? I think I do. That's why I got into crypto. Is just to automate everything. My entire financial life. I just want to automate it 
just press the go button, let robots run everything, and then, then they just make me poor forever. Heck, robots probably do a better job at trading than me. <laughs> that said, let's look at the charts. <laughs> Not financial advice, remember that. Brady is notoriously bad for trading, but I can trade myself into a stable coin rather well on by accident. <laughs> but I'm never profitable. <laughs> um, I actually took some trading classes from a gentleman... Uh, who had these really, really nice trading classes, actually. Uh, um, Chris Laurie, he's actually a uh, um, Olympic bobsledder, professional Olympic bobsledder turned Forex trader. Uh, that's actually when I got into crypto. I discovered Chris Laurie's Forex trading classes, got really into currency trading very early on in, um, geez, I think this was like, this had to have been, 2010 I think when I really started getting into it and I started looking at a lot of Chris Laurie's work and discovered Bitcoin on that journey but the point being is Chris is really good about teaching people about price action and, and looking at how everything works and looking at liquidity voids and uh, I had told him while I was taking the classes that I keep trading myself into just a stable position I'm never lose it losing or gaining anything he said that's a great place to start because at least you're not losing anything now you just need to start trying to extract value out of the market and uh, I just never seem to be able to quite break out of that I've always had this habit of just trading into a stable position and uh, I still have that so that said Nothing I show you is financial advice because you're going to trade yourself into a stable position. But if that's what you're into, creating your own stable coin by being a terrible trader, stop by the Dab Digest today. <laughs> anyway, actually, Chris Laurie actually has some really good content if you're interested in learning about price action and, and for, traditional Forex trading. He has some really interesting content out there. Um, it's a lot, a lot of it's very dated. Uh, but a lot of it's still relevant. He teaches you to create your own trading strategies and stuff, and it's pretty, pretty interesting stuff. It's still relevant to this day, even if you look at some of the old videos. Well, that said, let's look at these charts, though. We still have quite a bit locked in DeFi. We're kind of hovering in this little range of total value locked, which is total nonsense if, if you can just double the count on things. Yeah, it's too... It's 200 billion. No, it's 156. It's 200 billion. 156. What does that button even do? Come on, no. DeFi Llama. It says, you hover over the, the little question mark. It says, it doubles the count of the TVL. No other explanation. They're just like, yeah, you can just like double it. That said, charts are meaningless. <laughs> Let's move on to some more charts. Um, so we've got... Um, this really, we're looking at uh, Bitcoin, by the way, against the US dollar. Uh, we have this really thick, just pile of trading activity that we cannot seem to break down through. And like I have been saying, it, it looks like we're probably not going to. Unless something catastrophic and crazy happens, like Elizabeth Warren is elected president of the United States, uh, I think we're safe. But <laughs> until then, uh, I think... We're good to go. I think we're going to stay above this trading range right here. Uh, we do have this liquidity void right above here. So I doubt we're going to really break out and go up here anytime soon. And even if we did, we have this really thick pile of traders here. Just quite exuberant about the 48,000 range. Um, <laughs> it's uh, going to be banging around in here quite a bit, I think. And uh, it's going to be hard to break out of this range. But you never know what's going to happen. There's some interesting things in the news we're going to take a look at a little bit that might shove it upwards or maybe even downwards out of here. And if we do and we get into this liquidity void, look at this void down here. It's like this is no man's land. Uh, I hope we don't get down there, but I doubt I doubt we will. I think 29,000 looks like the bottom, you know, and we're pretty close to that you know, in the grand scheme of things. It's kind of scary. But, as I always say, who cares? <laughs> Let's look at ETH. 
Who cares? Everyone's like, we all care, Brady. Shut up. <laughs> we know you trade yourself into a stable coin and you don't care because you suck at trading. But we care. We care a lot. You ever seen that movie? I care a lot. It was pretty good. It's worth watching. It's funny. It has nothing to do with money, but it's pretty good. It's about an evil woman. So, we're at the peak bounce here. I mean, this is like the mass amount of all the trading volume is like right here where we're bouncing off of on with ETH. And it is bouncing hard there. It does not want to break down. It doesn't want to break through. Everyone got kind of scared there for a little bit. And it was like, oh my God, we're in the void. And then it came bouncing straight back up. And here we are. We're still hovering. Uh, who knows what's going to happen? Keep an eye on Bitcoin first just to see what it might push ETH to do. But ETH does look like it's starting to kind of break out of its range with Bitcoin still. I mean, look at this. This is Bitcoin against ETH, which is kind of the more interesting chart. I mean, look at this. We're at the we're at the peak right here of trading volume, and it's just hanging in the balance there. What is going to happen? I don't know, but we're building a lot of support right here in this little range, and it did break out and pop up right up into this. And if we break out above this and we come bouncing off the top here, this becomes support, and I don't know if it's going to really break through. This is pretty decent support, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see. We have kind of a weak leg upwards that might just falter, break down, and come straight back down into this bottom of this channel here. But we'll have to see. Um, we'll have to see. I don't know. Your connection broke. All good. Hey, Keith, how are you doing? Long time no see. It's good to have you. Thanks for stopping in. Grasp on crypto says scary. Not if you're wanting to get in more. Yeah, no kidding. I didn't get to take advantage of this bull market, really. I never do. I trade myself into a stable coin. <laughs> As Warren Buffett says, the only time you want the value of your stock to go up is when you're ready to sell. That's right. That's right get happy when the price is going down get sad when the price is going up because then you got to leave party's over it's game over you're moving on anyway i'm not gonna hamper on these charts too much because it doesn't really matter like i'm always saying these charts are like all fluff and nonsense because the real big players they're not trading on, on with re retail this is like retail is just for people to like look at these charts and cry like hourly oh it's going down oh it's going up oh it's going down you know like it, it doesn't really matter because the big players they're not even trading over here and they're the ones actually moving these markets and they're going to make this gigantic buy and then you're going to see this this move up when someone had this giant sell and then you're going to see it move down because they're covering their cost basis like on wholesale OTC markets and stuff. And you typically see it drop dramatically like this in a market when someone has a large buy order. And then this spike is a large sell order. So it's like these charts don't really matter. And you need to kind of detach yourself emotionally from charts. I do like looking at it because it does tell an interesting story about how people are feeling. And long term, it's really cool to see like the traction and the volume and the volume. That's actually why I have this volume profiler to the right, because that is what's more interesting is where, what price are people really buying and selling at? Uh, what price are these big whales actually buying and selling at? The big spike in the candle doesn't really matter. What matters is that volume right there. And this volume down here, that's all you really need to be paying attention to and try to think backwards when you're looking at, the, at these charts because it'll help you detach emotionally. That's what I do anyway. Of course, I do trade myself into a stable coin, so maybe maybe this is bad advice. This is not financial advice of any kind. This is just some dude on Twitch doing astrology for traders. <laughs> I see it going to the right tomorrow. One more candle on the daily. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, let's look at the news. 
In a four, $44 billion Argentine debt deal, the IMF shows growing willingness to coerce anti-crypto policies. Uh, is it any wonder why they would want to do that? No, no. The IMF is known for being very, very strange when it comes to, well, giving people their sovereignty and control over their country. And they like strong arming countries into debt deals and doing very unfavorable things that pretty much place totalitarian, terrible control, financial control over nearly every country they can get their fingers in. Um, so that said, uh, if you actually look at what's what's going on, um, <laughs> the line on page 19 is notable for two reasons. Actually, let's read the previous one. Buried in the text of the deal, the Argentine, Argentine Senate appro approved on March 18th uh, to refinance its $44 million debt to the International Monetary Fund and avoid a default was a one-line provision that seemed to s I have a harder time reading in the mornings. <laughs> uh, to signal a broader effort to discourage the use of cryptocurrencies as a form of payment. The strengthening financial resilience section of the 34 page letter of intent ratified today reads to further safeguard financial stability we are taking important steps to discourage the use of cryptocurrencies with a view to preventing money laundering and this is the this is the interesting line informality and disintermediation the two things that crypto is known for it's extremely informal and it is its whole purpose and its existence is to disintermediate. So they're like, yeah, um, that informal stuff that disintermediates us and our little debt deals and our ability to place terrible financial impositions on many different countries around the world. Yeah, that doesn't work when we have this open financial system. So yeah, that's not gonna work for us. Can If you're gonna work out this debt deal, we need you to understand that we can't have anything like what happened in El Salvador happen. Deal? Deal. As long as no Bitcoin national currencies are going on, um, we're good and we'll cut you this deal. Otherwise, no deal. So that's basically what this was saying. Are we surprised? No. No, we aren't. Is the IMF still putting Bitcoin in their basket of currencies for their SDR currency? Is, it, is, is Bitcoin backing the SDR? Hmm, I don't know. So they're basically saying we're allowed to trade Bitcoin, uh, but if you make Bitcoin your national currency, uh, deals off and you don't get a loan. Pretty weird. People protesting the IMF in Argentina, by the way, burning IMF signs on the street. Are they? Thank you for that information. Will you drop something about that? I love seeing the... Uh, the activist side of all this that is usually not talked about in some of these news articles. These are, they glaze over how the actual people feel. Imagine that. The one thing that is affecting them, the money they use to buy the food so they can eat and feed their family is the one thing that's glazed over. It's like, let's just not, let's not talk about what people want. Let's talk about what nation states and businesses want. Because that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. And everyone wonders why crypto is so popular. Yeah, gonna get a lot more popular, buddy. Under regulatory pressure, Binance to end Ontario operations. Uh, sad to see. Um, but yes, this is happening. Um, regulatory pressure is really pushing Binance around quite a bit. They have been in hot water for a number of different reasons we've been reporting on almost, it seems like every week now. Uh, and this is yet again, another strong arm situation for Binance. What are they doing with it? They obviously are not playing their cards right because they keep getting pushed around. Binance, do better. You used to be the big dogs, you used to be the hand that feeds. What happened? Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why. Bank of Canada collaborating with MIT on the central bank digital currency research. Maybe that's why. Oh, I see now. 
it all makes sense. Just one news article later. Yes, uh, the Bank of Canada is collaborating with MIT to launch a central bank digital currency. And that doesn't really jive with things like Binance being all up in their business, right? So central bank digital currencies are about to get really, really popular really, really fast because it is a matter of life and death for banks. They must launch a cryptocurrency of their own so they can compete and be compatible with the new financial paradigm that has emerged. So that's going to happen. But you're going to see a lot of this stuff where you see these back-to-back -back news articles. Oh, Binance isn't allowed to operate here anymore. Get out. By the way, we're launching a central bank digital currency. <laughs> oh, the trade deals need to move forward. Ukraine, Zelensky signs virtual assets bill into law legalizing crypto. I thought it already was, but I guess now it's official. Anyway, Ukraine has received... This is a smaller number than what it actually is at this point. Uh, has re received $100 million in crypto don donations during the war with Russia. You all know how I feel about donating directly to nation states with your cryptocurrency. I think you would be better off donating to Gitcoin grants that benefit people directly in Ukraine. Uh, and it's accountable and publicly auditable. What the money is doing going to a nation state is probably not what you expect. So just keep that in mind, especially when we look at all these strong arming situations and nation state deals like our, we saw with Argentina and IMF. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Russia's largest bank to issue digital financial assets following approval. Mm. They also said they're not really digging this whole open financial system thing. They're like, no, 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 no. Uh, just like uh, the whole situation with Binance and being at odds with central bank digital currencies, Russia was like, no, you know what? We can't be total jerks and dominate and stomp people's guts in like total jerks and have this open financial system. We're going to have to lock that down so we can launch our own digital assets. Uh, how that works out, I don't know. We'll have to see. But of course, our wonderful Elizabeth Warren immediately jumps up after she sees this and is like, oh my God, we need to do some sanctions. We need to pass a bill banning all cryptocurrencies. This means that they're using Bitcoin and they're going to completely decimate the, the world economy. And, and, uh, 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 and she just has this com total freaking panic like knee-jerk knee reaction to the situation. They have a Senate hearing. She asks very pointed questions to people knowledgeable about cryptocurrency, cuts them off, doesn't let them finish talking, and says, well, that wasn't the answer I was looking for. Pretty terrible. You can actually look on Twitter and watch the conversations. Well, it wasn't even a conversation. It was her dictating her view, asking a question, cutting them off, and then not moving forward with it and not wanting to hear anything because she's an idiot. Um, uh, unfortunately, Elizabeth Warren, everything she wants in the world, like, you know, accountability, <laughs> cryptocurrency, you know, <laughs> too big to fail, put them in a glass box. They're publicly audible. Me thinks she doesn't actually want accountability. She just wants, well, what she wants and she wants you to shut up and not talk about it. Um, it's really clear that she's not very bright, and if, if she is bright, she's evil. So, we're just going to move on from there. Almost sounds like she's working for Putin at this point. Oh, did I say that out loud? Elizabeth, get your shit together and go talk to some people in the industry and let them speak for a minute. Are you freaking kidding me? You're literally sounding like a dictator right now. Like, wake up and listen and have a conversation and let people speak. Don't be rude. And look, this is my show. You have to shut up and listen because it's a one-way conversation. Oh, you don't like one-way conversations? Shut up and listen. How's that feel? Hmm? Shut up and listen. <laughs> oh, gotta love being a Twitch streamer. You just get to say stuff and then get banned. 
because people don't like it. That's what happens. They're like, oh, we don't like what this Twitch streamer has to say. He said Elizabeth Warren is an idiot. Uh, we need to take him off the air because that was very impolite. You know what's impolite? Not having civil discourse. Not having proper civil discourse so you can have an actual political conversation about the real world problems. Not trying to cram bills down people's throat without allowing them to speak about it. Anyway, I'm not going to harp on that one. We all know how I feel about the boomers making the laws. GameStop announces the launch of an NFT marketplace for Q2. I know, I was a little angry there. I had to move on. Uh, GameStop. So, I love this idea. I have this dream of GameStop creating, like, a, well, a marketplace just like Steam or at the Epic Game Store, right? but the games themselves are NFTs. This is the best use case for NFTs you could ever dream up. And GameStop is the one the one place that it could happen. And because they understand the value of having those physical discs and their entire business model hinges on the idea of having that physical disc and owning it. They understand ownership. They understand the novelty of having that item that is yours and you could let lend it out and borrow it to your friends or keep it as a collector's item and sell it on eBay later down the road for more money or actually have a secondary market of some kind for your games instead of buying it from Steam and they're like, well, we actually own it, but uh, you're kind of renting it from us even though you bought it for full price and we're never gonna let you actually own it or lend it out, much less sell it. GameStop could actually turn this around. They're launching an NFT marketplace. If it's for game items, I'm gonna slap the hell out of them. I'm just gonna grab them by the scruff and say, what are you doing? You have the opportunity of a lifetime sitting in your lap. This NFT marketplace better be for the games themselves. Figure it out. Make it work. Listening to Sensei preach to the choir. I'm sorry, I don't I shouldn't I don't even need to preach. I'm, that's what I should do. I should just like not talk because we're all on the same page and I don't even need to speak. It'll just be a stream of me staring in the camera like this. I'll be like, Welcome to the DAP Digest. I'm your host, Brady McKenna. Thanks for coming, everybody. Been wonderful seeing you. Anyway, come on, GameStop. Make us proud. Do it the right way. I really hope you understand the value of NFTs for you specifically. You're, you are in a position to leverage this. Imagine having physically redeemable NFTs for the, those physical games themselves just to really like hone in on that whole physical redemption thing for these NFTs and then use that, the revenue generated from that model and take and just flip the switch on NFT digital copies and boom, you guys are winning at the entire game market. You might be stuck with just independent game companies, but that's okay. Those are the people that need the help the most. The big companies will probably will never do this anyway, so whatever. Anyway, Mark Zuckerberg confirms NFTs. Oh, everyone's like, well, well I guess NFTs are the way to move forward. <laughs> uh, so, of course, Mark is like jumping on the bandwagon. He's like, well, our, our nation state currency we tried to launch for the great nation of Facebook didn't work. So we rebranded to Meta and now we're doing NFTs. Uh, Mark, are you okay? Like, honestly, are you okay? Like, I'm serious. Are you okay? I look in your eyes, like, just as a fellow human and, and not this guy who pretends like you're a robot and, and makes funny jokes. Like, I look in your eyes and I feel like you're not okay. And I feel like you need, like, this one-on-one -on -one human conversation with someone. Because it's getting weird, bro. We're meta. NFTs. Crypt. Ugh, come on, man. Just, just calm down, have a conversation with someone, like a human, not AI. I think you're just talking to AI too much. I think that's what's going on. You are human, you know that, right? Anyway. All jokes aside, 
<laughs> it's probably gonna piss off the Instagram community, isn't it? Is it? It probably is. Instagram is not too keen on NFTs. I don't know how this is gonna go over. Watch, it's like the biggest thing ever and everyone loves NFTs because of this. That'd be our luck, right? Ethereum wallet, MetaMask, passes 30 million users and plans a DAO and a token. They already said they were planning a DAO and a token. Why they keep saying it, I don't know. It's kind of like an announcement of an announcement of an announcement. Um, can you guys just launch it? <laughs> From the way they're talking, it sounds like their token is going to be like non-transferable and only used for governance. Wouldn't that be an interesting turn of events? Um, a non-speculative bind on a quip token you cannot move this token but you can use it for many things that would be fascinating vitalik has been speaking quite a bit on this actually and there is a article from time if you would like to read it um i'm gonna drop it it's worth a read if you don't fully know Vitalik, this kind of gives a high-level overview of who he is. Share it with your friends and family, regardless of your views of time. I have a lot of mixed feelings of time myself, but they did do a fair article on him, and uh, I feel like it was pretty a pretty good high-level overview of Vitalik and his views and everything. But um, there's some interesting things. That, I mean, the main takeaway, if you want to too long didn't read, is that Vitalik is a little concerned about the future of crypto was the whole title and it's mostly focused on the fact that we're only focused on speculation, speculation, speculation and a lot of the greedy mentalities that come with speculation are at the forefront of, forefront of all development within crypto and a lot of things like Harburger taxes and um, you know funding the commons with things like Gitcoin grants and and things of that nature that really allow people to redistribute wealth without the need of a government. That's really um, what it a lot of it boils down to, and it's a pretty good takeaway in terms of he's concerned that we're just going down that path, and that was why he started talking about the whole. Um, non-transferable NFTs as a form of identity and being able to use those to vote in a DAO based on your contributions and not necessarily being able to sell that item is a worthwhile endeavor and a lot more projects should probably move down that route. In fact, I think it would be kind of interesting to launch something like an NFT, like if we did NFTs for Streamtide that are used for governance and allowing all of you as decision makers to decide who gets to have a grant on the platform uh, would be a really good use case for this. But those NFTs would have to be non-transferable to work properly. That way, if you are a donator and contributor to the community in some meaningful way, and I issued that NFT to you, you would never be able to, to transfer it from your wallet. But that wallet is like permanently embedded as a governance participant. If that wallet got hacked though, that's the question is, how do you redeem that item again? Can you go get a second one? Um, are we gonna see people like sharing wallets and doing weird stuff like that? I don't know, it'll be interesting. Grasp on Crypto says, that he's been preaching this for a while. Uh, Non-transferable NFTs is what POAP should be based on. Yeah, I think I see POAP becoming like the main place to make that happen. If they launch non-transferable POAPs, they win at the NFT game, in my opinion. They really do. Uh, they are the most user-friendly and easiest NFT platform you could possibly use and yeah, I think that's, uh, imagine if they were non-transferable, that would be perfect for governance. I think a secure multi-sig wallet would become the norm for stuff like that. Yeah, it would have to be, right? Like smart contract based wallets, or I guess that's another term for it, uh, or multi-sig wallets, like personal multi-sig wallets. Argent Wallet does that, but it's like not the greatest of user experience yet. Uh, but you can have social recovery of your wallets as well. You can actually designate another 
person, well, another wallet address to be able to unlock your wallet if you lose access. Uh, I think things like that need to happen before we can make a lot of this work as efficiently, but there's no reason we can't start now. And yeah, you're right, POAP would be the place. I think that would be epic. Anyway, Payments Giant Stripe launches support for crypto and NFTs. Uh, that's, um, I think this was already announced, but I guess they're moving forward in more of a formal fashion. Um, I know it's integrated into uh, a lot. There's a, Stripe's been really getting their fingers into the crypto pie lately, uh, even though, I don't know, there's a, there's a lot of mixed feelings with using credit cards to buy crypto. It's actually moving forward in, an, in some interesting ways. Um, and yeah. So they're doing it for pay, payments and KYC services. So this is the interesting one for me. Um, if they move in the KYC route, does Stripe become the de facto KYC, like zero knowledge proof tool? If I hear the words zero knowledge proof KYC and Stripe in the same sentence, <laughs> I'm going to be sad for one that it was Stripe that did it before anyone else, because it means everyone was way too distracted with, well, ape coin and monies and number go up and yeah, all that. Um, anyway, whatever, if it's Stripe and it works cool, but they do need some competitors. <laughs> Coinbase chief, sorry for ominous email demanding bank statements from, well, our very own Gavin Andreessen is the one who brought it to everyone's attention that Coinbase did demand three months of bank statements to keep their account open. And Brian on Twitter responded, sorry about that, Gavin. Uh, we know you're the CIA already. We won't leave you. We, we won't bother you a bit. It was an automated system. <laughs> um... Yeah, <laughs> Gavin being the CIA. That's like saying I'm the FBI just because I've done compliance work. Um, <laughs> Be scared. I've done work before. Evil. No, uh, Gavin was obviously a little upset about it. And uh, for obvious reasons, it's a little weird to ask for bank statements just to use Coinbase when they already practically ask you to urinate in a cup just to use Coinbase, it's a little overkill. Uh, they did back down and say that they weren't going to, but he did <laughs> provide the email, which looked like a phishing email, and it wasn't a good look for Coinbase. I mean, they already have plenty of information. Why send out something that looks like a straight up phishing email from the Coinbase compliance team? Um, I don't know, it's getting a little weird. I assume it has to do with sanctions issues and things happening. Maybe there were some transactions of concern uh, with Gavin um, being the CIA and all. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, Coinbase gobbling up bank statements is just how it works. Um, that's not just how it works. It seemed very targeted because not everyone got this. But if you start seeing this, uh, let me know. I would like to hear if you've had this experience. I personally haven't had it. Uh, if I do start having experiences like this, it'll be a bit strange. They're, uh, <laughs> they're probably just going to see uh, <laughs> a bunch of embarrassing transactions. and <laughs> I should just start buying a bunch of really weird stuff. Like, that's super embarrassing on purpose. And that way, if anyone asks me for bank statements, they're going to have to see these just like, oh my God, what is that? Is that really what I think it is? Oh my God. Um, sir, it appears that you bought... Um, beep. <laughs> You've never had a negative experience with Coinbase and I've been using them since they first came about. Yeah, I... I uh, I haven't heard a lot of people. It seems like kind of a targeted weird thing every now and then. Uh, obviously is if they're just, we're only seeing news articles like this about specific people, but it was interesting that it was like influencers in the space like Gavin uh, getting targeted. Uh, Evan Van Ness, uh, I guess they got one as well. So I don't know. Anyway, moving on. If you happen to get one though, uh, let me know. I would like to hear what your experience is. So, 
Speaking of ApeCoin, uh, ApeCoin was launched from Board Ape Yacht Club. Apparently, the average airdrop was seventy thousand dollars per ape. Uh, if you actually had an actual ape, and you also got some pretty sizable ones if you had a mutant ape or the kennel club uh, as well. So this turned into a pretty interesting catalyst for seeing quite a bit more capital flooding into NFT land because uh, I don't know if you can see it on this chart. I don't think you can because this chart is terrible with NFTs. Yeah, you can't see it. Um, Anyway, there was a pretty big uptick of volume traded in NFTs right after this happened. I assume because a lot of people got a big windfall and decided to go pick up some NFTs that they've been wanting for quite some time uh, because the price of ApeCoin did dip pretty significantly right after the launch, which indicates a lot of people were aping into other NFTs with the newfound money and liquidity that they had from ApeCoin. Uh, that said, ApeCoin is supposed to be fueling their game economy and metaverse um, that they're launching. And uh, yeah, they're moving forward into the metaverse. I wish everyone would stop saying that. We're just launching a game. <laughs> There's nothing really meta about it. There's nothing meta about Facebook. And when it gets meta... I'm sure we'll all know because it'll be really weird, but there's nothing meta about any of this yet. It's just cryptocurrencies and games. Okay, shut up. <laughs> anyway, uh, they're launching a DAO um, and a lot of people had mixed feelings about the token launch because they said, oh, you're getting away from NFTs and how amazing and down to earth it is. It's like, no, they're, NFTs are just cryptocurrencies. I hate to break it to you, but... It's just a cryptocurrency with a picture, and it's not much different than any other cryptocurrency. Just saying. Just saying. You can argue all day, but they're all just cryptocurrencies, and they're all used the same. You know? They hold some value. There's a secondary market. They just... NFTs happen to be lower in the total coins in circulation and have a picture attached. That's the only difference, but whatever. They're tokens. <laughs> Just my opinion. You know what they say about opinions. Uh, Shesba, you said, uh, speaking of Coinbase, currently in the middle of a bad experience with them, but outside of the experience, Nothing but good things to say. Uh, you signed up for Coinbase uh, CC. I assume you're talking about their debit card or up there. Uh, have only used it four times total and not stored the info online. Credit card info was hacked and while trying to talk to customer support to shut down the card and be sent a new one, they just kept locking down my entire account. Hmm. Sounds like they're trying to protect you from something though. I don't know. Sounds like overkill, like, protection. I don't know. Yeah, other than that, I haven't had too many bad experiences. It's been pretty smooth. As long as you pee in a cup, you're good. <laughs> yeah, I think they meant the debit card. I don't think... They, they don't have a credit card, I don't think. Unless it's uh, outside the US. I don't know if... They have a Coinbase credit card. Or maybe they... Uh, I don't know. Shesba, feel free to fill us in what you meant there. Uh, yeah, let's do some dank dumps as a thank you for listening to my antics. <laughs> Grasp on crypto, it didn't reveal properly? Are you serious? I totally revealed my vote. I absolutely revealed mine. Are you serious? Hold on. Let me look. Oh my god. Okay. Interesting. I totally did on two different accounts. And I totally revealed. 
Okay, I'll have to talk to Matouche. Something's wrong. Um, hey, anyone who voted to try and remove this, um, I'm going to refund your gas fees. Uh, hit me up uh, after the stream. I'm going to refund your gas fees. And I'm going to... We're going to kick this off again and make sure that this goes through this next time. And I'm going to talk to Matouche to try to see what's going on. Uh, but I totally revealed. That's really odd. Huh. This is the second one, too, here. Yeah, something's wrong. I don't think it's challenging properly. Okay, well, that said... Hit me up after stream. I'm going to refund anyone's um, gas fees. Uh, I know gas fees are a, an issue on ma the main net registry. Uh, we did do some work to make it a little bit better, but uh, it's still high. I did see your comment to grasp about fees being high on gas. There isn't a lot we can do because of the nature of the way we're doing the registry. We'd have to redo a lot of stuff. Um, we're probably going to come back to the registry soon now that we got Meme Factory launched on Polygon. And uh, as you've seen, the team has been jumping on the feature requests I've been putting in GitHub pretty quickly. Um, and we are doing some hiring as long as we can get Matouche to take a look at the registry here soon. We should be able to see what's going on. Yeah, that's the thing, Grasp. Um, we could probably re-architect it completely, but it wouldn't be anytime soon that this would be live. We would have to do something completely different with the registry to do what you're describing with off-chain signatures and voting kind of like, I assume you're talking about kind of the way Snapshot works. Uh, we could probably migrate to a Snapshot style structure, but we would have to like reinvent the wheel here. And uh, seems an off-chain signature could generate that vote and reveal should be the only portion that's necessary on chain. Snapshot is all off-chain. It would seem only the reveal should be required to be on chain. Yeah. Um, let me talk to Matouche. Let me see if there's something we can do, but it would have to be a feature request and a complete change to the way the registry works. I would more so be in favor of just migrating the registry to another chain or um, something like Arbitrum or something like that. But I guess like what you're describing would save a step though in terms of having to vote, well, challenge, vote, and reveal. Um, I don't know. On a technical side, I don't know how hard that would be to implement into the registry. I think it would be easier to try and maybe play with this idea on Meme Factory because that was the whole thing about Meme Factory was we hardened all this code so it could be used for the registry. Now that we have Meme, Meme Factory on Polygon, it might be a good time to experiment with some more experimental ideas. So we could migrate that over to the actual district registry. So. Yeah, I don't know. Put put in, um, keep putting in proposals. I really appreciate you putting in the ones you did. Uh, I will talk to the team about some of this and see what we can do. What about zk sync? Um, zk sync would work. Yeah, I mean, Matouche himself has said that he's a bigger fan of zk sync over some of the other options out there, and he did a pretty deep dive into zk sync. So. Yeah, that wouldn't be that bad of an idea. But the problem is, is you would have to migrate your tokens, your DNT, over to ZK Sync to be able to vote and do everything. So you would have that initial transaction, kind of like on Meme Factory, where you have to uh, migrate your uh, tokens over to Polygon. Yeah. Hey, Raven Dave. Polygon, welcome, first time chat. Polygon is great when it works. Yeah, that's the problem. Uh, having those three days where it was down was a little rough, right? Um, Polygon is also a very centralized solution and uh, Vitalik actually wrote about that in the Time article. He was concerned about people migrating 
to very centralized solutions because Ethereum is just so expensive and he's very concerned about it and said that it's kind of an arms race right now when it comes to the use uh, positive use cases of crypto and a lot of people are migrating uh, for financial reasons, for speculative apps and, and things of that nature. Like that's why Binance Smart Chain got so popular. Everyone was doing DeFi and uh, it kind of vampire attacked Ethereum and sucked a lot of liquidity over there. And uh, he's concerned about a lot of that and digs into it quite a bit, but yeah. Um, so, oh, there was a couple minor news articles that I didn't even really want to report on. Someone borrowed five bored apes to cl claim $1.1 million of ape tokens. Keep in mind, to borrow NFTs, you do need to have a have it over collateralized. So this person basically had the money to buy those apes. But instead of buying those apes, they borrowed them, claimed the ape token, paid the loan back, and walked away with a million dollars. Um, pretty interesting strategy there. Might not be a bad idea to keep this in mind for future airdrops that you might see coming up on cheaper coins that maybe you can afford. Uh, pretty interesting. I say coins, NFTs, they're coins. Shut up. <laughs> um, yeah, and Dr. Disrespect is selling an NFT beta access to his game that is not out yet. Um, interesting to see Twitch streamers moving in the direction of crypto pretty heavily. Uh, I think a lot of Twitch streamers are going to start doing things similar to what I'm doing and experimenting with NFTs and token gated access. There's a lot of things that you can do with just bots on uh, Twitch that I don't think a lot of people realize yet. It's kind of why I'm on Twitch because it has a pretty open system and the chat is my favorite part about Twitch. It's just using IRC. If I leave Twitch, I can keep the, our Twitch chat and log into our IRC and just, we can keep this. This could be like a backbone IRC chat right here on Twitch forever. You can just keep this. And Chez TV, um, my thoughts on Moon River. I don't really have any thoughts on Moon River. <laughs> I don't have any thoughts on any specific projects unless it's, uh, interest, it's interesting enough for me to actually dig into thoroughly because it's doing something big enough for me to care about. And uh, Moon River hasn't really done anything for me to care about enough to dig into it deep enough to have an opinion. Grasp, you said if you bridge to Polygon, your mainnet funds are now only as secure as the centralized Polygon. Yes, that is correct. So be very, very selective on which bridges you use. Uh, by the way, how do we submit proposals you mentioned a couple of minutes ago? Do we write on the District Xerox site somewhere? Or do you mean on uh, uh, GitHub? Yeah, uh, I mean on GitHub. So you would... Oh, you mean on Discord. Grasp said GitHub. Yeah, yeah. Just follow the link that Grasp dropped there. Uh, that is where you would do it. But if you go if you go to the link he gave you, that is for the registry specifically. You want to back up to the... Uh, well, here, I'll show you real quick. Hold on, give me a second. <laughs> Yeah, so GitHub. So if you're on GitHub, you'll actually wanna back up all the way to the District 0x1 and go to the specific repo for the dApp that you are interested in putting in an, a feature request for. So Meme Factory here, um, this is the one that we are putting a lot of time into to try and get it up to snuff with the new version, but uh, everything's going pretty well. We're actually diving into that today to look at Meme Factory 2.0. It's kind of more like 1.2, <laughs> not 2.0. I think 2.0 would have something cool like, I don't know, dank yield farming. <laughs> That'd be cool. I don't know if we can do that. I actually have a proposal put together for something like that, but I don't know if it makes sense. Um, I have mixed feelings about yield farming and the long-term viability of doing it. And 
it's a very short sighted thing to do yield farming. So I'm, I don't know. So, um, you would just come to meme factory and you would go to issues and you would put in a new issue right here. There are two different options. You can put in a feature request or a full bug report. Uh, if you do that, uh, there is a lot that you do need to fill out. Not all of this needs to be on point, but it does help. Like if you describe the problem, make sure you keep problem there. Cause when you hit preview, it'll, it'll have the, uh, headers for each item there. So just fill out the problem and replace the text there with whatever issue you're having. Uh, describe how the implementation would be from your view and the acceptance criteria rules for the for the future pull request to be accepted. You don't really have to put anything here unless you want to, uh, but definitely add some notes or images. You should be able to drag and drop an image in here uh, if you want to take screenshots or maybe you have a mock-up explaining your idea or feature request and then future steps uh, that should be taken after this issue has been resolved. Is it linked to any other issues? Is it part of a larger problem that you're trying to solve with your feature request, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, for issues, when you go to put one in, like actual bugs, um, on, on user story, um, you're basically explaining like, I'm a user, I was trying to do this. When I did this, this happened instead of this. And here's uh, the description of the problem and also the expected behavior of what you think should have happened uh, as opposed to how it actually happened for you in your user story and then how to reproduce that bug. If you could add all this, I know it's a lot, but it would really help our developers pinpoint exactly what the problem is and how we can re reproduce the problem so we can actually fix it. Uh, open web app, uh, blah, 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 step three, etc. And then solution, if you have an idea, summarize the solution. If you have your own creative idea on how it should be solved, if it's kind of a larger issue, yeah. Feel free to fill all this out and uh, to the best of your ability and the developers should jump on it pretty quickly. As you can see, we've actually closed out quite a few bugs and issues this week um, within just the past two days. So yeah, um, Grasp actually had a couple of ideas here. These will be kind of longer term uh, feature requests that we will need to get to, but uh, we are researching it a little bit. I think it would be kind of cool to have EPNS uh, to enable notifications to remind you to do things like reveal your votes and things of that nature. Anyway, um, yeah, let's look at Meme Factory. So the new Meme Factory, we should be all fixed. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jack, you said that's so cool. I didn't know GitHub works like that. Yeah, um, we have the templates set up. And if you put one in, uh, you could actually do the work yourself on Meme Factory. So as you can see, if you went to Meme Factory and you looked at some of the stuff that we did most recently, um, uh, let's look at the commits here. So... Yeah, this was 23 hours ago. Uh, as all of you could see, the the faucet on there wasn't working properly. Uh, you can actually come in here and you can do all of this yourself. So you can go to the specific file that was changed, change the code yourself, and you can put in a pull request. And a pull request actually sends it to our team. They'll take a look at it. And if it's something that they can merge, uh, they will take a look at it, make sure everything checks out, and then they will merge that themselves if it's something that makes sense. So you can actually do the code yourself, or if there's typos on the site, you can update, update those and put it in a pull request and have the team update it uh, just by merging your code you did. So yeah, it's the social network of the devs. Yes, it is. Um, this is where they hang out. So if you want to talk to Matush, you will have a better chance at him responding on GitHub than you would anywhere else. So that's, there's also that. Um, yeah, so. Uh, 
Oh, I need to uh, actually get him a response. Um, let me do that right now. Do -do -do. Okay, so it looks like maybe the faucet wasn't fixed. It should be fixed. Anyway, let me take a look. Hold on. Let me switch over here. Yeah, here we go. So, yeah. Hey, thank you so much for the sub there, Pay. I appreciate it. We will be donating this to get coin grants here before the round is up, which I believe is on the 22nd. Uh, I was going to wait till today's stream to see what bits, subs, and money we had, uh, but I did just get paid out about $100 from Twitch, and we will be donating that to some Gitcoin grants, and likely some of the Ukraine-focused ones, but we'll do some of the ones we typically do every round as well. Um, I'm going to keep it kind of a smaller batch of Gitcoin grants this round, so we have uh, larger amounts for the matching, but yeah, thank you so much for your subs. I will tack this on even though we don't have the payout till the next payout. I'll tack these ones on and uh, see what we can do to get the most money together. But thank you for your two-month subs. I, sub, I appreciate it. <laughs> Jack, I thought devs communicate through a Linux kernel all in ones and zeros. <laughs> yeah, maybe, huh? So, yeah, um, let me actually switch over to Meme Factory the way it normally looks. I have dark mode turned on using Dark Reader. So if any of you are wondering why I have dark mode, it is not native. I have to use this. I would love to have dark mode, but that is a feature that would be basically redesigning all of Meme Factory from the ground up just to have dark mode. So we probably won't have it for quite some time, if at all. Um, oh no, he's going to blind us. Ah. Um, so yeah, uh, Meme Factory is live though. Uh, we did fix the Discord button. Uh, for those of you who saw that that was broken for a, quite a while, uh, I forgot to actually bump that and get it fixed. It is fixed now. It will actually give you the proper link to Discord, which is, yeah, it is, it's working. So that's fixed. Um, switching to Polygon is just right at the top, but it's not on every page. Keep in mind, uh, if you would like it on every page, obviously put in a feature request, ask how you think this would work better. Maybe if it was placed right here or anything of that nature, just let us know how you would like that to look. We do have a feature coming here pretty soon that is going to allow you to switch back to mainnet, which is actually at a different URL now. When you go to memefactory.io, you are on the Polygon version now. So you will see that Meme Factory is currently empty. So um, it is not empty because it's not working. It's empty because it's a brand new fresh registry. So hit switch to Polygon, hit, it'll pop up, hit switch network, and you're good. You're on Polygon now. Uh, you will notice that there is an issue loading balances on Polygon sometimes. Just hit refresh, it should pop right up and it should start working again. Uh, we're working on some things to fix that, but uh, that is a very minor issue. Uh, you can just reload the page and it'll pop up and show. You do need to do that when you're bridging your tokens or using the faucet. After about, it takes about 10, 15 minutes I've noticed for the faucet and the bridge to actually work and spit out your tokens but you can watch it on the network you can look to poly look at polygon scan and look and if you see them in your wallet and it's not showing on here it's nothing that a refresh can't just fix so just boop you're done uh, sometimes a hard refresh if you need to um, and hard refresh I believe is on Windows just holding control 
and clicking the refresh button. Um, if you're on Mac, I think it's shift command and click. I don't remember. You'll have to actually look up how to hard refresh on your operating system. But yeah, you worst case scenario, a hard refresh will fix it. But that said, Meme Factory is live. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Meme Factory is a complete on-chain governance dApp that I don't feel like got enough attention on mainnet. Now that it is on, on, on Polygon, I want to run this contest that we currently have for LGBT Putin. Uh, put him in, dress him in drag, make fun of him. <laughs> the, uh, the, the contest is live right now. So I gave all of you a head start on the last stream so you could start doing it. Even if you're not an artist, I want you all to go use the template that we have. Uh, I actually, I have a template on Canva. Uh, I'll pull it up and I'll drop it in chat for all of you right now. But use the template that I created to make some memes really easily. And that's a really quick and easy way to make your own memes. But go to Fiverr, pay someone five bucks to make a meme for you and then submit it to the registry. And if you start selling those for Polygon, who knows, you might turn this into a really interesting way to just go to Fiverr, get art done, submit it to the registry, get decent art and load the registry up and win these contests. And you're going to get, uh, I, I will likely add Matic uh, into the contest pool. I didn't say that in the blog post, but I want you all to have some Matic, some Dank and some DNT and tied for these contests. So I'm going to sweeten the pot with a various pool of of prizes that all of you I think will love if you submit these and you show me some of the best, most creative ways we can load this registry up because it's a fresh registry. We need to load it up, but it needs to be good. And I will sweeten the pot if all of you do this for me. Go to Fiverr, get some art done if you're not an artist. Let's make this happen. Let's make Meme Factory awesome. It's cheap, it's easy to use, and this is currently our contest here. So, Meme Factory's LGBT Putin contest. Yes, we're gonna give it a quick read here. Let me know what you think. This was my idea, I hope you all enjoyed it. For the first in a series of official Meme Factory contests, we will celebrate being LGBT and what it means to live in a free society that allows you to do so. What better way than dressing up a dictator in drag? That's right, you meme factory monsters. The world's poster boy for anti-free thinking is going to be forced into the one place he dare not visit. A gay bar. Mm-hmm. If Putin likes riding bears, we want to see him riding bear back. Oof. Do we? <laughs> if Putin thinks loving someone is a crime, then we will fill him with love. If he thinks dressing up in drag is against traditional values, we will change his idea of value. Let's sell those memes for cold hard cash. That's right, Meme Factory, it's your time to shine. Let's throw Putin into a dress and have some fun. This is going to be a gay pride parade mixed with a little bit of clockwork orange style re-education for our dear Putin. And if you don't know what that is, clockwork orange eyes. That's all you gotta do if you wanna Google it. Uh, <laughs> this is what we're going to be doing for our dear Putin. We're going to hold his eyes open. We're going to force him to see the light. And we're going to change his view of the world. That is right. There's some I ironic, ironicness, is that a word? <laughs> With this whole movie and uh, what I'm doing here. There's a lot of play, play on words here and... I thought this would be a fun one. Uh, I might be disappeared <laughs> for doing this. I don't know, we're gonna see. But I thought it would be fun. Well, we'll have to see. If everyone hates the idea, whatever. If you love the idea, let me know. Uh, I love making fun of dictators. And you should too. Elizabeth Warren is next. <laughs> We should do Elizabeth next. I think that's the ne this whole series is going to be people with bad worldviews and bad takes. We're just going to like dress them up in drag, like every single one of them. <laughs> so yeah, 
If you're familiar with Meme Factory, you can skip the prizes section here, but I'm going to drop this for all of you. So, um, yeah, go ahead and skip this section, but it's basically explaining that Meme Factory is a incentive-driven voting game, aka token curated registry. This does link to our education portal if you want to watch the video on what a token curated registry is. You can watch that. It's a pretty informative video. It explains it rather well. Uh, initially, we launched Meme Factory in 2018 on Mainnet, and as all of you know, it died because gas fees made it just not feasible to vote in Meme Factory. We gave away the vast majority of the curation tokens, Dank, that you all know and love, which we're going to go ahead and drop a little bit right now. Boop. So, yes, um, <clears throat> now that Dank is on Polygon, we will probably be adding that back to the stream store as well. So the Dank will actually be Dank, but it will be redeemable, obviously, for Tide tokens and anything else that we may drop in the stream store. But because we gave away the vast majority of the tokens to active governance participants, uh, Meme Factory being a fresh, empty registry is completely up to all of you. And if you want to get a little bit of dank, you just come here to the Get Dank button down here at the bottom of the website on memefactory.io. And you're just going to go ahead and click Make a Tweet. And it should autofill all that information with the current wallet that you are logged in with. And then you tweet it out. Then you're going to grab the URL that you tweeted out. Um, and you're going to bring it back here, paste it in, bloop, and hit submit. And it should, within about, uh, I believe it should take about 15 minutes or so, uh, you'll see your dank in your wallet. Uh, if you don't see your balance update and it's just showing blank there, like I said, after about 15 minutes, hit the reload page. Boom, and you should see your dank, and you're good to go. It should give you enough for a couple submissions into the registry. So you go to submit. Oh, it's at 100. It'll give you about, I think it's going to give you about 2,000 dank. So you'll have enough for several submissions right now. But these parameters, what it costs to actually deposit um, your dank and submit your meme, this is up to all of you as well. So when you go to the parameters page, all of you can change this. You can change the meme deposit. Currently, it's 100 dank. You can say, you know what? I think I want to make it 1,000 dank. Uh, it will require you to have 1 million dank tokens to be able to put in changes to a parameter in this DAP. But it's complete on-chain governance. All of you as dank holders can change this if you have a million dank tokens. Yes, that's quite a bit. But... I believe you can get a hold of a million dank fairly easy off a of balancer right now on mainnet. Um, so it's not that big of a barrier to entry if you're really serious about playing around with this. But considering we gave over 80% of the token supply away to active governance participants, there's quite a few people out there that have enough right now. They are the primary governance participants that can change these parameters. But yeah, um, that's all you do. So you pick the parameter you want to change in the DAP. Uh, you can say, you know what, I want to change the parameter to deposit too. So that can even be changed. You can be like, you know what, a million dank is a little too much. Let's bump it down. Let's make it interesting. Let's say it's only 10,000. There we go. Boom. Now it only requires 10,000 to be able to change these. Um, but this does go through the registry process. So you submit it. You do need to add a comment as to why you think you want to submit that. You hit submit and then you will see all the previous proposals down here that are challenged and go through. And then if you, it goes through, uh, you can see here, uh, the meme deposit was changed. Uh, the re amount required to submit a meme was changed. The meme challenge dispensation has been changed. So that basically means like when you challenge a meme, you have to match that other person's dank deposit. And when you do, it goes up for a vote for the community. So as you can see, these are the two that were, are currently in. Uh, they were both voted stank because I didn't want just my cheesy little memes as tests to go through. It is currently completely empty and I wanna see LGBT Putin memes go through. Um, but you can see how the actual vote went through. You can see how many people voted dank as opposed to stank. And you can claim your reward if you voted here. So, yeah, that's all you got to do. 
And once you win, you come back here to resolve challenges and claim your reward. And that is it. Boom. So you should be able to claim your reward. Uh, there is a bit of a bug that I wanted to show all of you right now that we need to work on and try and figure out. But you will see this transaction is expected to fail. Um, be sure to watch this because it will take nearly an entire Matic token uh, if it's going to fail. And it, you, you don't want to do that. You actually want to hit reject. This is a bug. Just retry it and it should calculate the gas properly. Um, and if you see it, it's green on the estimated gas fee and it's something reasonable like 0 0.009 Matic, uh, that is a reasonable price that you will be paying for transactions on here. All you got to do, make sure it's green, hit confirm, confirm it on your ledger. I hope you're using a ledger and boom, that's it. You can claim your reward, you can vote, you can do all those things. Um, keep in mind that there that is the only current bug that I have found on Meme Factory. But yeah, that's it in terms of claiming. But voting works the same way. If you had an open challenge, uh, you would you'd be able to go to the vote page and vote on those items. And you earn part of the dank, the 50% that I was just showing you. Uh, the meme dispensation. It's taking 50% of that deposit that someone put in for, to submit their meme. And if it's challenged and voted to be removed, as you can see on these votes here, uh, half of that dank deposit is given to the challenger, the 50%, and then the other 50% is split between all the voters evenly, proportional to how many dank they voted with. So you can change that. If you feel like maybe the challenger deserves a little bit more than 50% because they're the one taking on all the risk, you can do that. But you need to add a comment explaining why you want to change it. And yeah, that's it. So you can change the meme deposit, which I would actually recommend. I was thinking about putting in a proposal to change it and ramp up the deposit to probably a thousand dank because I feel like 100 dank is a little too low to give people an incentive to want to vote. Uh, but at 1,000 dank, you're splitting 500 dank between the challenger and all the voters. That's a little bit more viable, especially if dank has some kind of um, value on balancer right now. That might be a little more in line with wanting to do that. That said, you can submit memes just to make um make uh, earn matic and you can sell your memes directly from matic too so you can earn matic just by selling memes and as you can see on mainnet quite a few people were buying mainnet memes with mainnet prices and uh if they're buying on mainnet who's to say they're not going to buy on matic too because it's cheaper now so yeah let's load it up let's sell some memes let's have some fun let's raise some money for some grants <clears throat> and uh let's play with a fully on chain dap that i don't think exists outside of meme factory i don't think there's anything else out there that lets you change every parameter vote to decide on what is actually submitted into the registry itself what can actually be minted as a meme and lets you challenge and do everything. Every aspect of Meme Factory is completely on-chain governance. And all you need is a little dank to do all of this. So head over here to memefactory.io slash git hyphen dank. And there you go. That's it. That's how you start. Come here, link your Twitter, get some dank. You do need a little bit of Matic and I'm probably going to start, I probably add Matic to our tip bot in discord to make that a little easier and we'll probably do some matic giveaways to get people started as well uh, if any of you here are interested though uh, you can use some of the matic bridges uh, i believe there's a matic bridge right on sushi swap i believe there is let me look um let me look hold on um ba -ba -ba -ba. I believe there is. Hold on. Let's look. I could have sworn they had a bridge right on here. Hmm. Ah. 
I could have sworn. Hmm. Maybe it was Uniswap. Let me take a look. Yep, it is on Uniswap. Okay, I guess Sushi doesn't have one. So, yeah, you're just going to come here. Uh, once you're on Uniswap, you can switch to Polygon just right here in the drop down. If you're on Ethereum, boop, just like that. That's all it takes to switch. Click Switch Network. Boom, that easy. Switch over to Polygon. They do have Optimism and Arbitrum as well as Polygon. And that's it. Switch over to Polygon. And you can click on the Polygon Token Bridge. Um, as Grasp mentioned earlier, be careful what bridges you're using. Uh, but the Uniswap one, you can be pretty safe. This is probably the one you should stick with. It's the one I use. Uh, but yeah, you just log right in. Boom, just like that. You're good to go. And once you're logged in, you can deposit. I do believe this takes quite a while to bridge, if I remember correctly. There are some other bridges that go quicker, uh, but this is the one that I use and trust. But I believe it takes a little while, if I remember correctly. Does it? I can't remember. I can't actually remember. Anyway, um... Yeah, just go ahead and come here. You're going to use the deposit and you do have the withdraw function as well. So yeah, it's a pretty straightforward bridge. It's what you'd expect. It's right on Uniswap. It's probably the one you should stick with. So that's how you do that. But we also have bridges built right into, um, that is just if you wanna bridge over and and get your Matic over to Polygon so you can use it from mainnet. Um, so that's just why I'm showing you that is just to get Matic moved over. But once you have Matic or if you already have Matic on Polygon, you're good to go. You can actually run right over to the bridge and you can get started. So you can bridge your Dank from the Ethereum mainnet. And you'll see that if you're using the Dank um, ETH to Polygon bridge, you can just switch right over to Ethereum right on our website. Click switch. You're good to go. And then you just type in, you know what? I want to move over 1 million tokens. Transfer tokens. Boop. Just like that. Make sure that it's in green and doesn't give you some crazy high gas fee. Uh, you will see that it's going to cost you about 0 0.01, 0 0.02 ETH right now at today's gas fees, which are a little higher than they have been. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and do it. I need about a million over here to give to all of you, actually, for giveaways, prizes, and stuff anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and bridge over a whole million uh, on top of the two million that I have set for the current contest. So that's all you do. Uh, looks like we're actually getting a cheaper price now. Cool. Confirm. So keep in mind, when you're bridging, uh, you are going to be paying 50 to to $100, depending on what gas fees are looking like on mainnet. But that's why we're actually moving to Polygon because that's absurd because that's what people were paying to buy memes, vote, submit, challenge, all that on mainnet meme factory. And it's just like not feasible, right? <clears throat> well, that's over. Once you pay that one time fee to move your dank over and you have some Polygon, you're good to go. You're done. Uh, it does take a little while. Yep, successfully transferred 1 million dank to layer two. So we're good to go. Now we can switch back to Polygon with the button right here. Switch, boom. And if you don't see your balance update, like I said, just hit the refresh button and you should be good to go. Uh, like I said, it does take a little while, up to 15 minutes sometimes. So keep in mind, we're not seeing it over here just yet because it does take a little while. Um, just you'll receive your dank within 15 minutes. If you have trouble receiving dank, please refresh the page or contact us. So that's good to go. All you gotta do now is uh, if you want to move your dank from Polygon back to ETH, we do have another option to be able to withdraw your tokens. Works the exact same way to move back. I don't know why you would, you would, um, but you could if you wanted. Um, and we do have a way to move your memes 
from ETH over to Polygon as well if you want to make them a Polygon version of your meme. Uh, we also have the ability to migrate from Polygon to ETH if you wanted to go sell them on OpenSea for ETH directly or you are a larger artist and you have a big following and you have the luxury of selling on ETH, you can do so. You can go ahead and migrate those over if you'd like. Pretty straightforward, just follow the directions. Let me know if you run into any issues or problems, uh, but this is all pretty straightforward. Our Hines is our current developer on Meme Factory and he did a wonderful job. He spent a lot of time building these bridges and they work pretty flawlessly. I'm pretty excited to see it. Uh, but that's the bridging, it's very straightforward. Now all we have to do is load up the registry. Now that you have bridged your dank over from ETH to Polygon, or you used the dank faucet to get some free ones, all you need is a little Matic and you're good to go. You hit submit, you upload your file. Uh, let's see if I even have anything to upload. I'm gonna go ahead and upload while we're on here. Um, so I'm gonna show you all how to make a meme really quick and then we'll upload it. So you're gonna to go to Canva and I actually have a design, like a public design that all of you can use yourself. Uh, keep in mind, it's like having a, like a Google Doc style editing interface, kind of like um, you can see everyone moving their cursor around. That's the way Canva works. So keep in mind, you're gonna see other people's work and vice versa. So when you're on here, um, just keep that in mind. Everyone's gonna see what you're doing. Uh, this is not secret, this is, this is not private. Uh, everyone is gonna see. I saw when I logged in here, it said Brady rules in the middle here. So uh, someone knows that you can have a public board to send messages with, but keep it in mind when you're using this. So uh, I'm gonna drop this in the Discord in the general channel right now. Um, feel free to use it. Oh, wrong one. Ha, I'm linking to my message. Hang on. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Copy link. Okay, there we go. And there we go. Yeah, just head there. And if you are logged into Canva, this should let you edit freely on here and make your own meme. All you have to do is upload your images. So let's see if I have uploads. Um, let's see if I have something to upload. Well, I mean, I guess we could do LGBT Putin stuff here. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, we do that. So all you're gonna do is upload your file. This is a meme that's already in Mainnet Meme Factory, so um, we won't be, well, I guess we could, you could challenge my meme. Uh, or maybe we could submit this just as is. Yeah, let's, let's submit it as is, and uh, if I sell it or something, Maybe the person who made this meme originally can come challenge it. And if you don't like that we used it, I'll make it worth your while. <laughs> I'll give you some good prizes for being the leader of the pack because they submitted this one in 2019, this meme was submitted. So yeah, uh, all you gotta do now is click the share button once you have your meme set up. You can use the frame that I gave you if you would like, or you can get rid of it. It's just a overlay on there. Hit download and you're good to go. Uh, you might want to make sure the size is a little bit lower because I don't know. You do need to keep the file size under 1.5 megs. So let's see if that even works. Hopefully it does. Yeah, I think we should be good. Um, oops, we're missing meme factory. There we go. All right. Do memes need text? No, Raven, uh, Raven Dave, they uh, do not need text. A meme should be able to speak for itself without text, but 
I, I honestly, I'm not a big fan of memes with text. I, I, that's me personally. Um, but there's no reason to think that it has to have text. That's just a misconception. The word meme is just, it's based off of culture replicating itself. So <clears throat> like rare Pepe's were based off of Pepe the Frog uh, just being replicated as a cultural phenomenon on the internet. It doesn't need text. It's just like Pepe just exists on the web as a meme being replicated as culture. It's a cultural replication is really what a meme is. So yeah, it doesn't need to have text. But if you want to use text, that's fine. Uh, Raven Dave, Dave, also you said, uh, is Quick Swap okay? Yeah, I believe Quick Swap actually has the most liquidity out of most polygon dexes. So uh, that's what I use. Um, uh, if I can't find liquidity for some tokens, I'll go to quick swap. But uh, I do know that uh, Uniswap has polygon now as well as sushi swap. So you can use quick swap, Uniswap, sushi swap, and I believe there's one other one, but those three should have the most liquidity for tokens, but there is no dank on quick swap at the moment, I don't think. That's up to, well, considering we gave 80%, over 80% of the token supply away to uh, the community, that's really up to all of you to decide if you want to provide liquidity for Dank. That's uh, entirely up to you. So, um, let's see, make sure I didn't miss anything. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, so let's go ahead and upload our meme now. So we're gonna go to submit. We're gonna go to upload. We're gonna click on our meme. And as long as you switched it down to the lower quality on Canva, it should upload and be the correct file size. So you should be good. Looks pretty good if you like the way it looks. Hit it up with a title, um, fake LGBT Putin. All right, ah, I can't even spell. Good, I don't wanna have to be able to spell his name properly. I should have done it wrong on purpose. Um, yeah, let's do LGBT. And let's do an issuance. So the max issuance on memes right now is set to 10, but that's another parameter. Every parameter in this DAP, you have control of as a dank holder and voter. So you can change this. Uh, it has a maximum of 100. Um, I believe I bumped it down to 10 a long time ago because at 10, it keeps the memes a little more rare. And if you have it bumped up to a hundred, you actually have to do multiple transactions to be able to mint all of your memes, which is a little bit of a headache. And on mainnet, it just wasn't feasible. So I bumped it down to 10. So everything you do would have been within one transaction. And minting NFTs uh, in mass like this, like a hundred NFTs all at once, uh, you can't typically do this with uh, NFTs. We have our own token standard on Meme Factory that we created that's a derivative of ERC721 uh, that's changed a little bit so we can mint them in mass. So they become a bit more fungible than a non-fungible token. So just to let you know, uh, Meme Factory memes are a slightly different token standard that we built ourselves. Uh, that said, they do not show up in some wallets properly because it is a different token standard, but they should show up on OpenSea just fine. OpenSea did make the change specifically for us to ensure that our memes show up. So yeah. Uh, if you see an issue for the Polygon memes, keep in mind we have not made that change for Polygon. Uh, the Polygon version of Meme Factory, you may not see them right away, but I'm working on getting them on Looks Rare and OpenSea both, um, but they may not work. But we have a marketplace right here on Meme Factory. There's not really a reason 
to use OpenSea because OpenSea charges fees. Uh, if you use Meme Factory, you're not going to, get, going to be charged anything. It's completely free other than the Matic gas fees that you will be paying. So I encourage you to just stay on Meme Factory. So, Wrecked. Hello, Wrecked. How are you? Um, let's see here. Uh, Wrecked, you said, does the one time a location work for you guys? Uh, it should. You're talking about the dank. Um, it should, I believe it's been fixed, but, uh, Matush was working on it last night. I don't know if it's entirely fixed. I haven't tested it myself today. I know it was broken yesterday. Um, if you have tried today, it should be working now though. Um, you might be able to use your same link that you've already created. If you did it before you put the fix through, you just tried it. Okay. Um, yeah, I haven't actually tested it since they pushed the fix, so, uh, and it fails. Um, okay. Yeah. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to mess with it and see what's going on. I'll have to, I'll have to talk to Matouche. He's on it though. We just have to put in the bug reports, keep working on it, but I believe the fix is already in, but if it's not working, we just need to figure it out. It's just a bug. You'll try right now. That'd be great if a couple people could try. Um, yeah, let me know and uh, post your results in Discord. Uh, I will lose track of it here on Twitch. So please post your results over there. We'll figure it out and we'll get it fixed. Uh, because all of you are having issues with the dank faucet, uh, if you are getting your memes ready for the current contest and you don't have dank at the moment, uh, just hit me up. I will just manually send all of you uh, dank as long as this, it's the um, first initial people. Uh, I will, yeah, I'll send it over to you. Don't worry about it. We'll make sure you have the dank ready to go whenever you're ready to submit. Just hit me up in Discord. I'll give you the dank you need. If you can't get the faucet working, we'll be rock solid. Everyone will have dank to be able to submit their contest entries one way or another. There is no closing date at the moment for this contest. I wanna see what kind of a turnout we have. Um, if we do have a pretty good turnout pretty quickly, I will announce a closing date. But I wanna just give everyone a good solid two, three, maybe even four weeks to really roll in, start using Meme Factory, learn how it's working, make sure you can get the faucet working. This is, consider this kind of a soft launch because we do need to kind of test in production to make sure the Polygon version is working right. If you run into any issues, if you lose tokens, if there's any kind of a money losing bug, as always, I will make you whole, I will fix it, and I will take care of you. Uh, but everything should be rock solid today other than the faucet. Unfortunately, the faucet is the one thing that isn't working, but failed the process request. Okay. Uno, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, anyone who tested the faucet, uh, please post in Discord and ping me. And uh, I, I really appreciate you testing, but um, anyone who did, let me know. I will, I will take care of you. Grasp, you just subbed for three months in a row. Thank you so much for the, oh, it was a gifted sub. <laughs> there you go, Grasp. You got a gifted sub from Wrecked. Thanks, Wrecked. I appreciate it. I'll give that to Gitcoin Grants. Astro, it said failed the process. Okay, yeah, it looks like the fix didn't go through last night. Um, Matush, if you're watching, um, it's still not working, sir. It's still not working. It did work at first but I had the brilliant idea of changing the text and making this make a tweet button. We didn't actually have the make a tweet button before. And because of my brilliant idea to have a make a tweet button, uh, <laughs> it kind of broke the feature. Uh, it was working perfectly until I added this feature request. So you can all blame me for trying to do this make a tweet button, but I thought this would be more convenient than having to manually type all of this in. Uh, so it works great up until the verification stage now. Uh, we will get it fixed though. Uh, you do have an add dank button to your, your wallet here, so you can do that, add dank, you're good to go. Uh, once we have this fixed, we'll be live though. Uh, so yes, oh, and of course I didn't submit my meme. Yay, let's try it again. 
All right, Putin, you're going in. Fake LGBT. Putin. Putin. LGBT. We'll do an issuance of one, I think. There will only be one of these. Um... Let's see, what is the comment? We need a good comment here. Uh, you know what? Let's just do... Let's just do a poop emoji. <laughs> uh, that's appropriate for Putin. Yeah, that'll work. How long would the bridge... Uh, should the bridge work? Uh, Wrecked. The bridge takes a good solid 15 minutes, I've noticed. And then once you wait a good solid 15 minutes and you see them in your wallet on chain, obviously, if you see them in your wallet on chain, they're over there. You can come back to Meme Factory and hit refresh, and your balance should update at the top after you hit refresh. So, all right, we didn't get any weird errors, so we should be good. Gas fees are a little bit higher right now, 0.029 Matic. Not too bad. Let's hit submit and let's go. I am gonna sweeten the pot though. I'm gonna give you all some Matic tokens uh, for these prizes too. I haven't decided how much, but I'm gonna pull some out of the community wallet, uh, the DAP Digest wallet. I got a little bit of ETH over there. I'm gonna move a bunch of Matic over using a bridge myself and give it away in the prizes. We will have Matic, we will have Dank, we will have Tide, we'll have DNT rewards. I think it'll be fun. Let's do it. Let's make this fun. So Putin is our meme contest. Uh, Putin, LGBT Putin. You can have fun with it. It doesn't have to be LGBT. I just, uh, that was just the fun kind of theme that I wanted to go with. Um, and here for a little bit of uh, inspiration, uh, I will read the contest for you. So, if Putin likes riding bears, we want to see him riding bear back. If Putin loves, thinks loving someone is a crime, we will fill him with love. If he thinks dressing up in drag is against traditional values, we will change his idea of value. Let's sell those memes for cold hard cash. That's right, Meme Factory. It's your time to shine. Let's throw Putin into a dress and have some fun. Yes. Let's do this. Putin stands no chance. No chance at all. These memes will be dank. And the satire will be ripe. Let's go hard, Meme Factory. So, are you thinking of making an anime weeb Putin? <laughs> Alright. Alright. Let's just make him uncomfortable, right? He, uh, for those of you who don't know, he did, um, he is very anti-LGBT. He has ran his whole campaign basic, basically being, um, anti-LGBT so I think this is ripe for the satire and considering how much of a jerk he's being in the world right now uh yeah let's have fun with it let's throw him under the bus um yeah I think we're good to go I think Putin has been submitted yes so once you have something submitted you will see it in the challenge tab and if you want to challenge it you can this is a stolen meme the first meme is a stolen meme I'm gonna let all of you decide whether or not a stolen meme is the first one that's allowed to be in the registry if you want to challenge it because you think a stolen meme from Mainnet Meme Factory from another artist that is not me should be the first one, leave it. Don't challenge it. And it will be in the registry in 23 hours and 57 minutes. If you think it's not right that I stole a meme from Mainnet, I want you to come here and challenge it and tell me why. And all you have to do is come to the challenge tab in Meme Factory, hit challenge, tell us why you think I'm a thief and how terrible of an idea this is that Brady stole a meme. And I want you to tell me. And I want you to hit challenge and you have to match my deposit of 100 dank, that's all you need, to challenge it. And then it goes up for a vote and you will see it in the vote page right here. 
And then everyone who holds dank gets to use their dank to vote. <laughs> Reason. Because I can. So, um, yeah. It's, uh, I, think it, I think it would be fun for all of you to see how a challenge works. So go ahead. If you want to challenge it, go for it. Challenge this meme. I gave a challengeable meme because it's stolen on purpose. Uh, but who knows? Maybe everyone decides and votes that, you know what? I want this one to be... I want this one to remain in the registry. I think that would be fun and interesting, and I think we're going to keep it. And there we go. That's how you make memes. Go to the Canva link I gave you all, and yeah. Need a moral Brady meme. <laughs> Brady meme. <laughs> Coma. Coma Dave. So, yeah, and keep in mind, if you challenge this, uh, if you win the challenge and everyone votes with you, you will receive... 50% at the current dispensation that is set in the parameters from all of you governance participants. 50% will go to the challenger, you who challenges. 50% will go to the voters. Um, but yeah, if you if you think 100 is a little too low, uh, come here to the parameters page and change that deposit. Bump it up to like 2,000. Um, the faucet currently gives 2,000 dang. So I almost think we should bump it up and say, you know what, the faucet is only good for one submission. And then that would give a thousand dank to the challenger and a thousand dank to all the voters. I think that almost aligns incentives a little bit better and it's still cheap enough to where it's not too crazy for everyone. I don't know, it's up to you. This is all up to you. Every tiny aspect of Meme Factory is up to you. Uh, to clue you into another bug this isn't necessarily a bug um if you come to the main meme factory page so the guide is broken currently because it only works if there's memes filling the registry so when you click guide me um it's gonna actually show you around meme factory a little bit in a really nice clean way um but when you go click through this first one, uh, there isn't a meme for it to jump to and show you. So this is only broken because we need memes in the registry. So please do our current contest, win some free money, have some fun, make fun of some dictators and fill this up so our really well done guide actually works again because it needs memes to be fixed. So it's up to you again. Like everything in Meme Factory, it's completely up to all of you. So that's the fun of Meme Factory. The game is now live. We are ready to go. We do have a not safe for work feature on Meme Factory. If you do not safe for work memes, I personally will be challenging them if you do not give them an, uh, a not safe for work tag when you submit. So when you're on your tags, be sure to add not safe for work. NSFW. Make sure that tag is on there if it's a not safe for work meme or questionable for younger audiences, or it will be challenged by me personally. And I hope and request that all of you will do the same thing to keep the registry in order. Because again, it's up to all of you to keep this registry clean and in order and decent and uh, of high quality. If you think someone's submission is just terrible artwork it's low quality it's kind of garbage trash art and you just don't like it and it's just trashy memes yeah challenge it and tell us why and then we'll let everyone vote and you never know trash art might actually get voted in because everyone's like you know what it's ironically terrible art which there was some of that in the main net version but it's all up to all of you so i gotta ask what do all of you think so far, though? We're actually going to get to play with this a little bit more than we have ever because it's cheap, especially because I'm going to be giving Matic away. <laughs> so you you aren't going to be paying anything to play Meme Factory. You get to come earn some. Uh, oh, and I saw a message. How do you claim your dank from the stream? Uh, it does need to be... Uh, I don't have actual dank tokens in the stream store yet, I have to manually go set that up and it is a very tedious and time consuming thing. Uh, and I've been working on getting Meme Factory ready to go for all of you in this contest and stuff. So I haven't had time to do that. Uh, that has been kind of secondary. Uh, but I will say this, if you want to redeem your stream points for actual dank, 
just hold on. Let me go figure out how to do link drop links on Polygon. And I haven't actually done that yet. I think it's pretty straightforward, uh, but I don't know if link drop lets anyone just go use link drop anymore. So I don't know if I can, I have to go look into all that. Uh, you can redeem them for Tide tokens all day long though. Uno, you're working on your dictator? Good, awesome. <laughs> be sure to add the NSFW if it is inappropriate though. Otherwise it will be challenged and maybe even removed. Grasp, you said it would be cool if you could integrate Nifty Inc. into Meme Factory where users could directly post into Meme Factory from there. Though if Nifty Inc. is on XDI, yeah, we wouldn't be able to. That and Nifty Inc. actually is minting uh, ERC-721s and our Meme Factory does use a different token standard. So that wouldn't work, unfortunately. It would be cool if we had a feature like Nifty Inc. though. Um... That's actually kind of an interesting feature request, maybe forking Nifty Inc. Because we wanted to have a meme making app in Meme Factory when we had originally launched. And it just became a difficult task to pull off with everything else we had on our plate. So we just never launched the feature. We were going to partner with a platform that was kind of like Canva and allow you to upload memes directly from that platform. But that partnership unfortunately fell through. Uh, so we never got to actually have that feature. So if any of you have an idea for forking something like Nifty Inc, which shouldn't be too hard and adding it into Meme Factory, that might be kind of fun. That said, you would have to have some mockups on how it would work on the submission page and uh, what that would actually look like in the UI. It would be a very lengthy and difficult uh, feature request, but I think it would be kind of a cool one for sure. <laughs> Uno, no worries. Keeping it clean. Only sweet makeup. <laughs> cool. Uno, for those of you who don't know, has been about on par with our dear Rekt here for being some of the largest sub submissions on the leaderboard, I believe. I, I, I'm pretty sure Uno and Rekt are neck and neck on the leaderboard on mainnet. We can't see the leaderboard right now uh, because the version one of Meme Factory is not live yet. We will get it live as soon as some of these bugs are fixed. Um, we were gonna have it live right away, but we have these bugs with the faucet and everything. And uh, Matush and Hines are both working on those before we get uh, the old Meme Factory up. But there will be a button that will take you back to the old meme factory. So you can do that if you would like and use mainnet still. Uh, so mainnet is not disappearing. It's just not live at the moment. And you'll be able to see the leaderboard and everything. You'll be able to migrate all your memes over too. So for those of you who don't know, you can move your ETH memes over to Polygon if you would like. Uh, I don't know if they're going to show up in the registry. That's something I haven't seen yet, actually, is if they show up in the registry. Interesting. I didn't actually think about that. I forgot to ask Matouche how they look in the registry. Hmm. Okay. Well, this is kind of a blind spot for me. I didn't think about... Actually, when I talked to the team, they said they weren't going to do ETH to Polygon bridge so this was actually a surprise for me that we even were able to do it i was under the impression we weren't able to so i don't know what this feature looks like i do know we were going to do the polygon to eth bridge for sure uh so this was kind of a pleasant surprise for me so i am kind of ignorant on this feature everybody <laughs> please excuse you caught me something brady didn't know Uno and Rex art is magnifique. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. They both are amazing artists. Yeah, I was surprised Matush and Hines actually got the ETH to Polygon bridge for the memes ready. Um, yeah, I just don't know what it's going to look like in your meme folio. I don't know if it shows up or 
if it's only to be able to trade them on open C. My understanding was that it's they're not going to show up in the registry. It's just going to allow you to bridge them so you could sell them on open C for cheaper fees. I think that is how this feature works. And if that's the case, we're gonna have to change the wording to inform everyone as such. I don't know, I'll have to talk to them. I completely forgot. Yeah, Matush has been getting getting uh getting down on Meme Factory this week. Also, thank Hines. He's uh he's been doing all, most of this work um and took it up. I challenge you because I can. <laughs> HC, did you say you, you challenge it? Yep, it's up. Okay, cool. Okay, so now that it's been challenged, um uh, I won't vote. Uh, you will not see any of my dank balance voting. We're going to... Uh... We're going to let all of you decide. So... Yeah. We're going to leave it up. So HC, did you use the bridge? Is that how you got your dank over there? Or did you manage to get the faucet working? How did you get dank over there? Well, regardless of how you did it, thank you for challenging this. We will um, we will see how it works out. Uh, to let you all know, uh, you cannot vote from multiple machines, even though you have your ledger on multiple machines. So your votes themselves are stored locally and you won't be able to reveal your vote on a different computer. That's why we have this backup and import feature. So if you want to migrate to another computer, be sure to just hit backup votes. And anytime you've made a vote here and you wanna go reveal it, you can go import this file using this import button on the other computer uh, and you can import it on the other one. And then the button to reveal your votes will show up. I recommend just for a better user experience, just to stay on the same machine when you're using Meme Factory. And then, uh, then you can come here you're gonna go ahead and vote. You're gonna say, you know what? This is a pretty stank meme. I'm gonna vote 10,000 dank. I'm gonna vote stank. Boom. You hit it. Make sure that this error does not pop up. If you see this error, that is the current bug on Meme Factory. Just hit reject and try it again. And it just didn't calculate the gas fees properly. Make sure it's green and doesn't have a fee and it's cheap like 0.01 Matic or something and hit confirm and then you're good to go. However, when the voting period ends in 24 hours, you're then gonna come back to Meme Factory and you're going to hit reveal votes. If you don't hit reveal votes, your votes don't count. Uh, this is just an unfortunate reality of the way Meme Factory works and a lot of stuff makes it in because people just forget to go reveal their votes. Uh, this is based off of the same type of structure that ENS originally used when ENS was not an NFT. And we use a very similar voting structure that ENS used to use that where there was a vote and reveal phase. So come here, vote. You have 24 hours to vote on something that's been challenged. After 24 hours, you have 24 hours to reveal. Once everyone vo everyone's votes are revealed, then we will know whether or not that it is in the registry. Uh, and it will show up in your meme folio under created. And anything you voted will also show up in curated. So, And if you're selling, you can see your selling and sold tab as well. So here we go. We're running. The dank registry is getting filled up with memes. I can't wait to see all your submissions. Two hour mark has passed after party begins. Start stripping, sir. Bounch, 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 bounch. Um, so HC, your claim worked from Twitter, really? Interesting. So that means some people are able to claim and some people aren't. There is some type of weird bug that we need to reproduce with the faucet. Okay. 
Okay, well, let me try again myself. Um... All right, let's try it. Let's go. Let's tweet. And then let's grab the URL to the tweet. Paste and submit. Failed to process request. Hmm. HC, can you do me a huge favor? Can you give me a link to your tweet in um, Discord? And for your privacy, you can open a uh, you can actually open a support ticket in the support channel. So if you go to support, um, where is support? Oh my God. Maybe I should put it at the top. Uh, let's see. Oh my God. Where is the support? <laughs> did I lose support? I did, didn't I? Hold on. Support. Oh, it's right there under the support section. I'm just being blind and stupid today. Ah, I'm going to move this to the top so it's a little easier to see. <laughs> Thank you for the follow there, strong boy. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So we're going to move this above open discussion. And uh, we're going to have it above start here. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah, just head over to support, open a ticket if you want to maintain your privacy. And if you would, you just click right here and that's all you gotta do. And you open it up. Okay. Yep, just hit create ticket and you should be good. Actually, I think yeah, they have the create ticket button now. I think I can remove all these. Yeah. But yeah, just click create ticket. It'll open a private channel with me and then we'll be good to go. Hey, strong boy, how are you? First time chatter? First time viewer or first time chatter? Welcome either way. Good to have you. Yesterday I constantly got error, but today it gave me, gave back my reward in one go. Interesting. Um, wonder why it's given me an error and not you. Hmm. Failed the process request. I don't know. You're not using Discord, HC? Okay, that's fine. You don't have to. You don't have to. Um, can you send me a message right here in Twitch? This is a PSYOP. <laughs> Hey, Anasaris, how, how are you? You did one for me? Okay, cool. Well, I needed HCs because HC said it's working for them. I wanted someone to who actually got the faucet to work to show me one that works and one that doesn't work because there's got to be some kind of a typo in the way it's formatting the tweet or something. Failed to process request. Inspect page. Let's see what's going on here. No errors. Interesting. There are no errors in the console. Strange. That's super weird. What happens to Anasaris' DNT that was used on the failed challenge of OpenNFT? Uh, they can go claim it back. They can go claim it back. Um, by the way, Anasaris, since you popped in, the challenge failed um, for some reason. Even though I voted with quite a bit of DNT on OpenNFT, I don't know why my votes didn't go through. I absolutely challenged, I mean, I mean voted and revealed. Um, I'm not sure why, 
but I am going to recover your uh, gas fees and we're gonna, I guess, try again. I don't know why it didn't go through. It's kind of, kind of frustrating. Uh, the registry needs some work now that we've got Meme Factory out of the gate on Polygon. We can move on to stuff like the registry. Uh, I don't know what's going on. I did not actually vote for inclusion. That's what's weird. What you're seeing, the vote to include was the staked DNT on the proposal itself. Yeah. The 21,000 was the staked DNT. And why it didn't work, I don't know. It's super weird. Hmm. Yeah, it's even letting me reclaim my votes. I totally revealed. That's super weird. Oh, I'm on Polygon. Shoot. Uh... No, you didn't do anything wrong. It, it bugged out and it didn't count my votes, which I don't understand why. I've never had it do that before. Um, it's acting buggy today too. It's not letting me reclaim. This is just MetaMask acting up. What is going on? Oh, that's why. Reject. Confirm. But that's how you reclaim. If you come here, you should have a reclaim button like you're seeing here. Screenshot is seed phrase. <laughs> Screen capped. Okay, this is not working. What is going on? Oh, because of this one. Okay, if any of you ever have this issue where you put in a transaction that you were on like Polygon and you accidentally put in a transaction and then it's showing up on the mainnet side because you switched in the middle of the transaction and then it's like this transaction that's just stuck here, um, you won't be able to transact at all until you fix it. So little key word of advice, you go up into the top right, you're gonna go down to settings you're gonna to go to show your seed for, no, I'm just kidding, don't show your seed phrase. <laughs> go to uh, advanced and you're going to scroll down to reset account. This will not reset your seed phrase or anything. It's just going to reset, like it's like kind of clearing your cache basically of all your previous transactions that might be stuck and you're just gonna hit reset account. And so, as it says, resetting your account will clear your transaction history. That will, this will not change your balances in your account or require you to re-enter your recovery phrase. Hit reset and you're good to go. Then your transactions will be cleared out and now you can actually transact again. So we should be able to go boom, just like that and confirm. And, <laughs> and now I made myself look stupid because it didn't work still. What the heck is going on? Okay, there are some bugs in the registry, apparently. This is a registry issue, for sure. Might need a hard refresh. Last time I had this issue, I think I had to reboot my computer, and I think it is actually a problem with the registry. Okay, well, settings, advanced, reset, yes, boom, done. Let's give it a hard refresh. Let's scroll down and try reclaiming again. 60 bucks to reclaim. Yeah, it's not working. Um, if you ever have this issue on the registry, you probably need to reboot your whole computer and clear 
your transactions, like I just said. I don't know why it's not working. Uh, we will hop on the registry here soon now that Meme Factory is done, though. We, do, we had to get Meme Factory out of the gate on Polygon and usable again. And that way we can move on to all our other dApps. You couldn't get it to work at all on your Mac. You had to go to the Windows. Okay. Um, that's good to know. We're going to have to do some work on the registry. As good of work as Hines did on uh, Meme Factory, maybe we should have him do the work on the registry. He did a wonderful job on Meme Factory. Is doing a wonderful job. He's still working on it. Hey, TK. How are you? First time chatter. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to have you. Appreciate the follow. Uh, Rekt, you said, quick question. You used the bridge on Meme Factory. It says it couldn't locate the transaction. Uh, so you bridged from ETH. You bridged your dank from ETH to Polygon. Where, where did it say it couldn't find the transaction? Because it should just work like this. You're just going to, if you're on mainnet currently... Hold on, let me clear these. Okay. So if you're on mainnet and you want to bridge your dank, you should be able to go and then transfer tokens. Then you're going to scroll down, hit confirm. Oh. Nope, it is my ledger. It's not letting me transact on Meme Factory at all. Okay. What is going on here? I had this issue the other day, and it was a MetaMask issue. It was on, like, on all dApps that it did this, and it just died and stopped working everywhere because I got in this loop of having to reset my account. Okay. Yeah, I guess it's not a registry issue. Hmm. On Matic, the dank isn't showing up. So, did the dank leave your wallet on mainnet? Um, can you do me a favor? Can you message me your transaction on mainnet? It is missing. Okay. So... Keep in mind, um, if you see the balance in Polygon Scan, like on your wallet, but you don't see it in Meme Factory, you will need to do like a hard refresh on Meme Factory, and it should pop up over here. But if it's not, let me know. Um, the problem is, is Matic has been having issues like, they were down for an entire two days or something. Three days. Um, and if that's the case, then you just have to wait. I hope that's not the case. You know, one feature that request that I think I'm going to put in when I have a little more time after we get through some of these initial first stages of launching, uh, I would like to have it like sushi. Like, like if Meme Factory had a button just like sushi swap where you came here and you're like oh you know what i'm gonna switch over from uh eth to polygon i would love this just boop click select polygon avalanche arbitrum i would love multiple networks for meme factory that would be amazing we'd have to change the way bridging works and and there would be a lot of changes so i don't know when that could happen but uh I bet Hines could pull it off. But yeah, just switch over just like that. Boom. And then you're on like the X die version of, of Polygon or whatever. That would be cool. All right, I'm going to try the bridge one more time. Have we got LPs set up on Polygon for Dank yet? No, I don't think anyone's set up a liquidity pool for Dank yet. Um, 
Yeah, it's up to all of you holding dank. <laughs> all you dank whales out there. You know, there's people with way more dank than me. Like, like I think... I don't know, I might have 10 million dank if I was lucky and I, like, pulled every bit of dank I had. I might have 10 million dank. For me, personally. But... That's a very small amount compared to some of the dank whales out there. The community manager for Meme Factory has less dank than the community. That's the way it should be, right? No, if any of you want have a decent amount of dank and the, the matic to do it, yeah, it's totally up to you, but please remember, anyone who's providing liquidity for anything ever at all whatsoever, keep in mind that 70%, I think it's like almost 80% of LPs, liquid, liquidity providers, lose money on their liquidity positions. So you need to look at it as a form of patronage. And like I always say, providing liquidity for a community to token like this is really the ultimate form of patronage. It validates that coin. It gives people kind of a, an ability to rage quit if they're sick of that community and they don't want to play the meme factory game anymore or hold their dank. They have a way to leave. And you as a liquidity provider are doing not much more than giving people that rage quit exit community exit functionality. Uh, but vice versa, you're also giving people an ability to just go buy the tokens if they wanted to do something like participate in the parameters functions and change parameters in meme factory they could go buy a million dank if they wanted and you're providing the ability for people to onboard to the community in a meaningful way and participate in governance so just like providing liquidity for people to leave you're providing liquidity for people to join and it is the ultimate form of patronage so yeah would love it if any of you wanted to do that but please remember it is just patronage you're probably going to lose money doing it even if i did some crazy like yield farming type thing with the dank token um yield farming is a very short-lived thing it is not a long-term viable strategy for building a solid stable token community um it's a very short-lived thing and a very small group of people typically profit in that situation and they're pretty cutthroat and ruthless in their ability to profit and use you as exit liquidity for their ability to profit so please remember it's a very cutthroat thing we can't do any kind of yield farming because it's not necessarily ethical if you think about it from the perspective of you're just doing it as a form of patronage and not to profit and even if you tried you would have some crazy whale stomping your guts in trying to use you as le exit liquidity uh who has a lot more capital at their disposal to be able to do so so don't hammer me to try and do like liquidity mining for dank because it's not happening for all the reasons i explained but if you want to lp as a form of patronage and to validate our community give people an exit and on ramp for dank yeah i i think that's a, a huge awesome thing for you to do and uh i would appreciate it lp for the culture yeah wrecked totally Um, that said, I think what meme.com did was kind of cool where they, uh, gave out meme like points you could trade in for memes for, for doing, um, uh, providing liquidity. Uh, I wouldn't mind doing something like that on meme factory, but I'd have to win over the rest of the team and the devs to be able to do something like that. And that would be a pretty huge endeavor building something like that, but we could like copy what meme.com did, which pretty sure meme.com copied my idea from talking about doing this uh i talked about doing like a point system that was redeem redeemable for memes like when we first launched meme factory and uh meme r ran with it and did it <laughs> anyway uh that's about it for meme factory does anyone have any questions or issues as we get started here You don't have any dank. Oh, I have to switch to Polygon. Switch. 
to polygon. Boom. So if you see this, your dank balance isn't, isn't showing, just hit the refresh button and you should be good to go. Oh yeah, you know what? The dank I bridged earlier didn't show up. You're right. The bridge is delaying. Okay. Well, let me go look here. Let's see if it's actually in my wallet. Uh, yeah, the dank did not bridge over. Hmm. Okay. Well, let me go to main net and see what happened here. Have we still got an A, have we still got a pool for dank on balancer? I'm sure I LP this but can't find it yeah we do i think i've got a little, little bit there you've got a little bit there a few other people put some on there maybe wrecked if i recall i can't remember who all had some there but yeah i believe balancer does um let me look at this issue really quick with the uh bridge Okay. Yeah. Um. Is this... Where's the transaction here? Oh. 58 minutes ago, 1 million dank did not transfer, and it did pull. From my wallet. Okay. Um, yeah, wrecked. Give me your mainnet transaction in a DM. Uh, I will make sure this is resolved. Uh, there may just be a delay, though. You might just see your tokens pop up in there here pretty soon. But uh, obviously, if there's ever any kind of an issue with these bridges, we will make sure you're taken care of. You are kind of being the guinea pig being with some of the first people using these bridges but we always make people whole and take care of everyone and it's usually uh by the nature of the way we do our smart contracts it's never just gone we can easily get it back to you without uh, any issues hmm strange So the way the the way the contract works is you are locking your tokens in the smart contract and it's spitting out the new token on the other side and then when and vice versa you are going to like kind of burn those tokens on the polygon side and it releases the original dank back out of the bridge smart contract so they're still there. They're in the contract. We might just have to uh, manually do something. Maybe I don't know. I don't know how it works. Honestly, I have to talk to them. I'm still learning a little bit about these bridges that we just built. We built them ourselves, so they might they might need a little help. All right. Well, <laughs> wrecked. Nervous chuckle. <laughs> It's gone. <laughs> no, it's not gone. I'll, I'll get it back to you one way or another. Switch to Polygon. Yeah, it's not transferring my dank either. Okay, well, it appears as though there's a few bugs and kinks we got to work out with the bridge and the faucet. But other than the bridge and the faucet having some issues... Everything, seem, everything else seems to be working just fine. Uh, I will give out some dank. If any, everyone, uh, before I hop off here, uh, what I want you all to do is if you are in Discord, uh, and if you're not using Discord, I know a couple of you said you weren't, uh, hit me up on Twitter. Uh, I am Brady, MCK underscore. I will drop a link to it. 
right here. That is me. Message me if you don't use Discord and send me your Polygon address you are using for Meme Factory and I will send you some dank. Um, if you are in Discord, ping me in the Meme Factory channel with your address if you're comfortable doing so or if you're not comfortable doing so and you don't want to share your address publicly which you are if you're using meme factory keep in mind that you are kind of doxing yourself as an artist on meme factory if you're uploading things so you are kind of doxing yourself anyway but if you do want a little bit of privacy just come on over to discord here to the support channel and go ahead and create a ticket and you can do it privately with me but I will send you all some dank. Oh, uh, Hines told me that the issue with the faucet that I reported is not working because I already got the dank with the faucet. To prevent abuses, the faucet limits to one request per Twitter account. Also, the account must be at least 90 days old. Otherwise, the faucet seems to be working fine. Ah, cool. I'll let him know about the bridge issue right now. Um, let me give him my bridge transaction here. Shoot. Where's the transaction? Come on, MetaMask. Quit being slow. Okay. I have too many add-ons here. Uh, ERC-20 tokens. Dank. One hour ago. Yep, that's it. All right, Kinez has been informed of the bridge issue. We'll take a look at it. Uh, if anyone has used the bridge and your dank did not bridge over properly though, let me know. We will fix you up. You never lose anything here. <laughs> Remember, we'll, we'll get you taken care of. You just gotta open a ticket if you are having an issue. So, Uno, you said, I never claimed with the former one, though. Did change my at less than 90 days ago. Oh, then that's what's going on, Uno. Um, unfortunately, if you changed your name, it may be why you're having an issue. That said, Uno, <laughs> we'll make sure you have dank, sir. You're one of our biggest users on Meme Factory, so... I will absolutely sponsor you. I am your dank sponsor. I'll make sure you have dank. Actually, all verified artists, by the way, if you're a verified artist, just hit me up. I'll give you a pretty decent uh, allocation of dank uh, so you don't have to mess with the faucet. The faucet's kind of for just the, the general public and stuff. And um, yeah, so no worries. Grasp, you said, I can't get dank. Twitter over 90 days old and no recent changes. Really? Hmm. Okay, well, then I'm going to have to try to duplicate this issue. Um, sim switch on. <laughs> Jack, you recently changed your name. Grasp didn't, though. Fawcett failed from Brave, Chromium, and Firefox. Okay, I appreciate the report there, Grasp. We'll have to try and figure out what's going on and duplicate the issue. Um... Hines, if you're watching right now, um, 
we're just going to have to tinker with it, I think, and try to reproduce the issue people are having because it looks very hit and miss. And I'm willing to bet there is something that it is seeing on Twitter that is preventing people and not others. Because I do have one successful report of people using it and mostly unsuccessful reports. And I will have to look into it and see what's going on with you, I guess. So, okay. Faucet inconsistency and the bridge is acting up and may just be delayed i think is what's going to be what's going to be the issue it's probably a polygon issue if, if we you know we've seen polygon have some issues but i mean challenges and votes and submissions went through just fine today so i don't know we'll have to see i don't know i don't know uh all of you though please do hit me up either open a ticket in discord if you want to share your polygon address Privately, I will give you some dank since the faucet isn't working. Uh, hit me up on Twitter if you don't use Discord or just post it in the Meme Factory channel and I will collect up all your addresses. I will make sure you have dank and I will make sure you have it in time to submit for the current contest. And yeah, let's, uh, let's make some memes. Let's have some fun with it. Let's do some satire and uh, maybe next time we will do Elizabeth Warren. Considering I put, apparently today I put Elizabeth Warren and Putin in the same bracket of dictator. The way she talks, it sounds like it. it. Sounds like she just wants to arrest everyone using crypto. Just like Putin. If you are not using our central bank digital currency... <laughs> Don't get your panties in a bundle there, Elizabeth. Um, Faucet failed from Brave, okay. I also have an idea about quadratic voting and incentives for Meme Factory. Ah, that sounds really interesting, Grasp. Please do tell whenever you want to discuss in Discord. I would love to hear what your thoughts are there. I think there's a lot more tools at our disposal, especially quadratic funding, that would really help with meme factory incentives. I think if we could do one thing that would be like, if we could figure out how to get the voting and revealing down to a one-step process and having quadratic funding, the, the those two things would be huge for meme factory. You can't find the dank LP on Balancer. Um, sorry, Anasaris, I said I was gonna pull that up for you. Let me look. Hang on a second. Let me dig for it. I had it bookmarked somewhere. Balancer. Where are you? Oh my God, it's way back here. I haven't used it in a while. Oh my god, where is it? Balancer, balancer, balancer. Is that it? That is... That's to trade, Dank. I don't think that's... Yeah, that's just to trade, Dank. Hmm. Hang on, I'm gonna have to search for it. Balancer, pool management, here it is. Still almost $30,000 worth of liquidity in there. It's not bad, it's not great, but it's not bad. It's good for a smaller community token like this. Uh, that is the link though to the pool so if you go there you should be able to pull your liquidity if you want if you are pulling liquidity uh let me know i'll try to get other people who are doing it who might not be watching stream um if i can remember who all it was i can't remember whoever who all the liquidity providers are and i'm we'll have to look 
Um, I might pull mine though, just an FYI, if anyone else is, uh, I might pull mine and put it on quick swap or sushi or something. It'd be cheaper. <laughs> I don't know. I might leave it there. I might, I don't know. I'll have to figure it out. You know, one thing I wanted to really do was, um, I think it'd be kind of fun to trade LP tokens for a PFP project, and you could only get the PFP if you bought it with your LP tokens for, like, Dank, Dank and Matic LP tokens. I think that'd be kind of a, a cool community building exercise that builds L a liqu permanent liquidity. Letting people arb, arb between chains might be useful. Yeah, maybe just leave it there. Yeah, and then the arbitrage between the two different chains might be an interesting thing just to get people trading dank a little bit more. Is trading dank important though? I don't know. Yeah, I'd say it is. Just the velocity of money, just getting it moving and getting the price and valuation of the token moving would inherently make it more liquid, I think. Because people trading, there's two sides of the trade more often than not if if it's just being kind of pointlessly traded just from our bots and stuff. Yeah, you're right. That might actually be kind of interesting. Especially, you would probably wouldn't see it very often. It would be whenever the price disparity between the cheaper chain got way out of whack from mainnet that it paid for the gas fees enough for people to justify doing it which means it would it wouldn't happen that often until there was like a lot of liquidity but it would be interesting to see for sure so when binance shut up wrecked <laughs> We need some win Binance uh, memes. I miss those ones. Those ones are pretty funny. I'm in it for the tech memes too. All gold chains and stuff. <laughs> uh, I love it. I can't wait to see the registry fill up though here on Polygon. I think since it's so cheap, like there's no reason to not see this thing just completely just get bombed with memes, right? Especially if I'm giving Matic away and dank to all of you. Um, yeah, any of you who is a uh, verified artist, hit me up. You will have a, a fairly decent size location of Dank coming. And uh, any of you, you will definitely be getting a Dank airdrop. Uh, anyone who uses Meme Factory um, and you have issues, uh, just hit me up. I, I will make sure you get Dank. And if you've had troubles with faucets or bad transactions, I'll give you some extra Dank and maybe even some Matic on top of that just to cover you. So... Uh, anything you're doing on Meme Factory is not going to be a loss, is what I'm saying. So just hit me up if you have a problem, and you will be able to play the game. Um, yeah, that's it for me, everybody. Uh, does anyone have any questions before I go? I will give you one last chance here, and then we will call it a day. And then I will go see what we can do about some of these bugs. Luckily, they're just bugs... Uh, Kind of minor bugs. I mean, the bridge is kind of a major bug, but we have to figure out what's going on there. But I will make you whole regardless of what happens with the bridge. And as far as the faucet's concerned, we'll make sure you have dank. So, minor issues in the grand scheme. I've got quite a bit of dank already bridged over. The bridge worked just fine. I'll, uh, I'll be able to give you all some dank regardless. Yep, I think we're good. Thank you so much for the dank airdrop there, Grasp. Appreciate it. Uh, yep, everyone, you have a wonderful day. This has been another episode of the Daft Digest. I'm your host, Brady McKenna. Let's go make some memes, and I hope you had fun today. Cheers. Brady, out. Maybe Brady out. <laughs> the button isn't working. <laughs>
Oh, okay. Well, I guess I'm not out because uh, the stream deck isn't working. Why isn't the stream de deck working? Oh my God. Okay. You working yet? Okay. Brady, out. <laughs> See y'all later. Have a good day.